TV Photo X1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video and this is gonna be the Mamiya 645 Pro Overview. Well, <clears throat> haven't I done this video already? Well, yes and no. I did a family history of the Mamiya 645 uh, line of cameras a while back, uh, but now I think I would like to look at the 645 Pro a little bit more specifically. Well, uh, let's uh, get on with it, shall we? <clears throat> we begin with the camera body, and this is basically uh, this is this is it. This is the camera body of the Mia 645 Pro. <clears throat> uh, if we're gonna start with the front, you have some very simple controls. Uh, you have the front trigger, which has uh, three positions with this outer ring. You can put it into a off mode, which means you can't press it. You have the normal shutter button which uh, will activate the shutter mechanism or you have a timer button or a timer function so you can have the self timer mode uh, also on the front and the other side you have this little button that says BC uh, and that's a battery check button so you press this and this light up here the battery check light will come on uh, also when you have the prism finder on it with the built-in uh, light meter this will also activate the light meter system. So anyway, that's basically what you have in the... Oh, and also you have this little arm up here, up top. Mm, that's basically for the f-stop, uh, for the camera to read the f-stop. So it's similar to the old Nikon system. Yep, uh, let's see, on the side here on the body, uh, this will be the left side. <clears throat> you have basically the first, the hot shoe which is a three connector type. Uh, underneath you also have a PC port, so you can choose between the two. You have the M up switch, which basically is this little thing here. Uh, and that's mirror up mode. So if, I, if you see in here, uh, I can actually put up the mirror. So mirror up mode. <clears throat> uh, you also have the lens remove, uh, which you basically pr push this little button backwards and that will actually uh, detach, make it so that the lens is detachable. <clears throat> uh, also, uh, what do we have more? We have this little cover here, uh, which is for, excuse me, <clears throat> a little gizmo that allows you this little thing here. It's a four pin connector, which you will put in like this, and lock it in. It's basically a remote or external triggering unit. It will make it so that you can use something like uh, a, you know, plunger style uh, trigger to be able to do uh, long exposures or mirror up uh, modes when you don't want shutter, sh you know, want to shake by pressing the button by yourself. Uh, so you can have a, you know, external trigger. And I think also there are some remote units out there. I don't really know. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, one side. And then on the right side. Uh, you have, for instance, down here, you have the multi-exposure uh, selector. So normally here it's single exposure, put it up like this and it becomes multi-exposure. Then also you have the clutch assembly for the winding mechanism, uh, where you can either, you know, like have one of these classic winding mechanisms. Let's see if I can put it on here such and this has a couple of different positions you can put it in uh, see you can put this winder in a few different positions or you can have something like this motor drive as you can see so you have some different options with this camera <clears throat> but anyway also on the side here you have the shutter speed selector and uh, the shutter speed selector, you know, we're gonna go come back to that in a moment. But anyway, if we take a look at the bottom, we basically have the tripod mount uh, and the uh, little battery door. Yeah. Uh, top side, we have the focusing screen, the 13 pin connector for the prism finder, and uh, yeah, that's basically pretty much it. Backside, we have the fabric focal plane shutter mechanism, uh, the 
ISO information or the ISO data uh, pins for the film back, the uh, winding mechanism for the film back, the interconnect uh, with the film back to show how many, uh, exp you know, if it's exposed or not. Uh, and then you have the prongs to, for, you know, connecting the film back. So that's basically the main part of the camera. Oh, and also up top you have a little detent button to get it out of A and AEL mode. So more about that later. <clears throat> and now when I got this camera, uh, I got it with this. This is the Prism Finder. This is model FE401. <clears throat> this uh, Prism Finder has the built-in, uh, what should we call, light meter in it. And you have actually a three precision switch up here that will allow you to change between the different metering modes. So basically what you have is first you have AV, which is basically average when it takes the entire uh, composition, of, uh, composition of the image into account when it comes to uh, you, know, uh, you know, metering for the light. You have the auto AS, which means that the Princeton finder itself will determine what type of exposure it will uh, see fit and then you have SP or a sin single point uh, which is basically a spot meter yeah so you have those three options so average spot or uh, let the prism finder itself decide which of those two would be best for the occasion yeah so then you have also on the side here you have a exposure compensation dial which uh, you have a little bit of a center you know detent button in order to uh, manipulate it and it's a plus and minus three stops uh, of compensation so basically you can put it on here as such and uh, I'm preferring to use the battery winder grip I mean this is the motor winder it's uh, uh, it's number WG401. It takes four AA batteries to operate. Uh, and uh, on the top, you have also a switch for battery check, which will make this little LED light up. You have on off, uh, which basically disconnects uh, the battery. You have a on button, and you have a start, which is basically that the motor grip can actually start winding the film in the film back when you have it all on the body. But anyway, you have this little contraption here on the front. Uh, you have to press this button down and raise this up. This is to disengage the clutch assembly here so that you can actually interface it with the camera. Uh, on the other side, on the side, you also have here the battery compartment. And since this will actually cover up the multiple exposure dial here, you actually have this little lever here that will do the job instead. But anyway, there you go. So now you have the the interface between the prism finder, the camera body itself, and the motor grip. The only thing we have left now is the film back, and I know there is a couple of different film backs for this camera, but the one that I have now is the standard 120 roll film back. There is also a 220 roll film back. A 220 film is, um, I don't think it's produced anymore. Uh, if there is someone out there doing a 220 film and I'm not aware of it, please put a comment in the uh, comment section below about that. Uh, but anyway, you have the also the four pin connectors here for the ISO data because that's what you dial in on top here. And it goes between ISO 25 to 6400. So if you want to push process some films as well, you can pretty much do it. And it interlocks with the camera here. You have the white manual winder here for the film. You have the little window here that says which exposure you're on. The back cover here that can open up when you remove and uh, put in a new film. I do unfortunately have a roll here already in this camera so I can't open it up and show it to you because then I will expose the film to the light in here. But otherwise on the other side you have this little red thing. It's the dark slide and there's a convenient little compartment for it back here. As you can see. So good stuff. And also you have a little memory hold card holder back here so you can uh, memorize what type of film you have in the camera. But basically that's it and uh, yeah, 
then you have uh, lenses and uh, it's basically whatever lens you fancy uses, using and what you have available for you. For me now I'm just having the 80mm 2.8 and it's like, uh, you know, putting on any other camera to li line up the red dot with the red dot and just it clicks into place and it engages this little, you know, aperture metering pin. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Now you have the entire camera uh, assembled. So yeah, it's a great camera and I really love it. And uh, for, it, for many people, the one, the two cameras in the Mamiya RB6, uh, not RB67, uh, 645 lineup, I would say that the most value for money is either is uh, the three, you know, uh, what should we call the three late, you know, the three latest uh, film cameras that they made. You have this one, you have the predecessor, the Super, and you have the successor to this, the 645 Pro TL. Only difference between this and the Pro TL is that the Pro TL does uh, flash uh, metering as well. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, now let's take a look at the top dial here for the you know, the uh, shutter speed control. <clears throat> there is a couple of special little functions on this camera that can be a little bit confusing if you don't know what they're doing. Uh, basically, you can put the shutter speed on the A setting, and what A setting is automatic exposure, in essence, aperture priority. So that means that you can set the f-stop of your camera and the so you control the f-stop and the camera will control the shutter speed. But doing that, it would probably be recommended that you use a tripod or that you have adequate lighting to have a shutter speed uh, that will not give you blurry pictures for what you're taking. But then you also have this other setting that is called AEL. And AEL mode is auto exposure with lock function. And that basically means that it's uh, Order, I would call it aperture priority with recompose. And what do I mean with that? Well, basically it means that when you depress the other this uh, button up here or half press the button that because you get two different uh, you know shutter buttons, when you half press them and you engage the uh, me metering mode, <clears throat> you can actually with AEL, you can actually half press it, compose your picture, half press it and then recompose the picture without the shutter speed changing. So you lock in the shutter speed for way, so it works very good with spot metering. That little, it's a neat little trick. Yeah, and then you have a different, some different no, uh, colors on the numbers here. So basically the yellow numbers, which is uh, the letter B, four and two is for whole seconds. That basically means that uh, B bulb mode, it means that as long as you keep the shutter depressed, the camera will expose uh, the negative. But in that aspect, I would strongly suggest that you use a cable release like this or something in that nature, because uh, you pressing the shutter will actually introduce shuddering or rather vibrations into the camera. So bulb mode, and uh, good thing would be to use mirror up mode and a cable release. That's just my opinion, but you, your mileage will, may vary. Uh, then you have uh, the white numbers, which is uh, uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 15, 30, 125, 250, and 1000. Well, basically you divide all of them by one and you get the shutter speed. So uh, it's the shutter speed of a uh, divided by one, so a second. So one divided by one, it's basically one second exposure, half second, fourth second, eighth of a second, fifteenth, uh, and so on up to one one thousandth of a second, which is the max uh, or fastest shutter speed this camera is available of doing. But then you also have the red color, and that's basically the auto exposure modes, the A and the AEL, but also 1 60th of a second is also highlighted in red. 
Uh, why is that? Well, it's because this is a focal plane shutter, so you have one of those fabric curtains. It's not like many Hasselblads and uh, the RB67 that have, you know, uh, leaf shutters in them. So uh, this camera has a maximum, or rather a minimum, flash sync speed of 1 60th of a second. That's the fastest you can have and it will sync with external flash. So yeah, basically that's the camera in a nutshell. And also, yeah, instruction manual. This is also a little piece that I'm using, but uh, I didn't uh, put it on because it's quite fiddly and it will basically double the length of the time of this video. It's a hand grip, so it basically sits here. So yeah, that's basically it. And I love this camera. I mean, I wanted, when before I got this camera, I wanted a Hasselblad, maybe a 500C, the CM, or a ELM, because that was the Apollo camera. But I think Hasselblad, classic Hasselblad so today, they're a little bit too much for what they are. I, I thought they become a little bit like Leica, that uh, they command too much of a premium for what they are. So. Um, it wasn't until I actually stumbled upon one of Tony Northrup's uh, videos, or rather the Northrup's video. It was Tony and Chelsea, and I will put a link to that video in the description. And that's when Tony uh, uh, did a over quick overview of his Mamiya RB67S. So yeah, one moment. So that started my interest in Mamiya and I don't regret it for one moment because I really enjoy this camera. It's a beautiful system to use and I think that anybody who's interested in it will really enjoy it too. And why do I keep it? Well, there is such a thing now that there is a retro vogue in photography and so on and I know I've seen numerous pictures online that these cameras can still be outfitted with digital medium format backs. So you can convert this to digital photography. But um, the prices for that, those are ridic ridiculous in the current uh, market, but uh, with anything in technology, prices are surely to drop. And when those uh, things comes out on the used markets, they will also start to go down in price eventually. But as of now, I really enjoy this camera as a, you know, stills camera for film photography, which is also making a, re, you know, a renaissance uh, nowadays in photography. But anyway, <clears throat> this uh, is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I would like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, as you're supposed to say in this YouTube malarkey. Uh, anyway, take care from now on. Bye.